It is 2018 now, and the thing to do is, of course, start with a big New Year, New Me resolution. But we also know how hard those are to stick to. Easy solution? Just post a photo of yourself and throw Instagram filters on it until all your internet friends forget you still the exact same person as last year. Well, this one's not getting any better. But what if you could do the same thing for your 3D printable models? Use a filter, make it smoother, turn it into a wireframe or a low poly model with minimum effort. Well, that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. As always, we're going to use free software so anyone can follow along. And these filters work on basically any 3D model. So even with designs that you simply download from Thingiverse, or you imagine as in good old STL file. Let's get to it. Okay, so obviously playing with 3D models isn't quite as swipey tappy as the real Instagram, but it's not much harder either once you know the basic moves. What we're going to be using today is Blender, a completely open source program, probably best known for being an awesome tool for creating and rendering out 3D animated shorts and movies. You all know Big Buck Bunny, right? Blender can be downloaded for free at blender.org. Depending on what slicer you use, you might also need MeshMixer or NetFab for some post-processing. I'll show you how to get NetFab Basic for free right here, and MeshMixer is and always has been free anyways. When you open up Blender, you'll be greeted by a welcome screen. Close that, then on your keyboard hit delete and enter to remove the default cube. There are actually a few really cool things you can do with just that cube, which I'll show you in another video, but for now we just need an empty workspace. To import your own files, hit File, Import, STL, and then select the file you want to import. When it first opens up, chances are it's going to be really far zoomed in. So basic controls for Blender are mouse wheel zooms in and out, the middle mouse button rotates the view, and holding Shift with the middle mouse button pans your view around. So the first model I want to show today is the Owl Statue by Kushwa. This is a really nice model in a few regards. First of all, of course, it looks great, but also the mesh it's based on is a really well-behaved mesh. Not all models have a mesh that is this even, so if you're running into issues with any of the modifiers we're about to apply, there are two that you can do before everything else that should clean up the mesh and make it a bit better suitable for what we're gonna do next. And those two are decimate and remesh. To add a modifier to a model, head over here to the right, then click the wrench, and hit add modifier and you're gonna get this long list of all the modifiers, aka filters you can apply to your model. Decimate analyzes the model and lets you remove detail where it's not needed. And you have this slider that goes from one to zero telling Blender how much detail to keep. If you drop it all the way to zero, obviously it's only gonna leave one or two triangles and that is not a usable model. But often you'll find that you can drop a model down to 50% of its original details or 0.5 and it's still going to look and feel the exact same as the original. If you go down further, say to 2 to 5%, depending on your model, you're going to get a really nice low poly effect. And if you like it, I mean, I know I do, you can save the model just like that with File, Export, STL. And with this owl, and especially the feathers on its chest, it actually looks really good already. If you only wanted a low poly effect, there you go. But for making a model more compatible with other modifiers, leaving a few more polygons is probably the better choice. Still, as a side effect, lowering the polygon count with Decimate is also going to make other modifiers run more smoothly. The other option of cleaning up a mesh is the Remesh modifier, and this one basically regenerates the entire model and gives it a new surface. Getting a perfect new model out of the Remesh modifier is non-trivial, so your model will look degraded one way or another, but it's a good last resort if you have one specific STL that just doesn't want to cooperate with any of the other modifiers. So for the first filter or modifier that we throw in here, why don't we try and go the exact opposite way? Instead of making a model less detailed or more low poly, why don't we try and make it smoother and add polygons? Why would you want to do that? Well, look at these two prints. One is smooth, the other you can see every single polygon. Yes, the slicer and the printer are going to have to work harder, they're going to have to process more detail, but the results, I think, speak for themselves. If you're lucky, you can turn a mediocre, medium polygon model into one that looks absolutely perfect. The modifier that does this is Subdivision Surface. 
you tell it how many passes to take and it adds detail accordingly. But you definitely don't want to add too much detail. Polygon counts over 1 million typically don't make much sense for an FDM 3D printer and they will also slow down Blender to a crawl. With a normal model, two or three passes are typically enough to make your print indistinguishably smooth. I mean, just look at that mesh, isn't that beautiful? You might get some light artifacting increases like these, but considering the resolution you're getting from your typical filament-based 3D printer, those aren't really gonna show up in the final print. Also keep in mind that upping the details too much will also slow down your 3D printer because you're gonna be running into bottlenecks for SD card or processor power. So don't go too crazy on this one. All right, let's get this one printed. One of the things you might need to do with any of these modified 3D models is to slice a bit of the bottom to give it a good first layer to stick to the bit. It's going to depend on which slice you use, but in Cura, it's as simple as just sliding the model a slight bit below your bed surface. Let's have a look at another pretty interesting modifier, and that is wireframe. Now if you just apply wireframe to a stock model, it's not going to look like anything special. But if you zoom in, you can actually see what it does. It basically takes the edges between polygons of your model and creates a small beam in place of them and then removes the rest of the model. So it's basically just this thin mesh shell you're getting. The first thing you want to do is turn off even thickness and that's already going to make it look a ton better. However, on normal models, there's typically way too much detail to actually use that as a full wireframe. So what you can do is that you can add a decimate filter in front of the wireframe filter like this. You can change the order of the filters with the arrows right here. Now to make the best of the wireframe filter, you do need to change some of the parameters. The default thickness of each of the wires is way too thin to reproduce for any standard 3D printer so you want to increase that to around three or four, which pretty much directly translates to three or four millimeters in real life. You can also play around with the replace original option and turn that on or off to actually create this low poly, very accentuated edgy model instead of just the wireframe. And that also kind of looks cool, I think. As always, just play around with the options, especially in combination with the decimate filter. It does give you a ton of options and a ton of different looks by either making it low poly from the start and then increasing the thickness of the wireframe or going the other way around and making really thin wires and a rather high poly base model. All right, here's a fun one. Go to add modifier, solidify, and then crank the offset to plus one and then slowly increase the thickness and just watch what happens. Like, look at that. I mean. Okay, this one's getting kind of, of mean and aggressive, but just look at how, how fluffy and poofy and, and fat it is. Now, this works with pretty much any model, but just like before, you can also add other modifiers before you actually apply the solidify one. In this case, I'm using the subdivision surface modifier before this, just to make it a bit smoother since the poofy solidified version got a bit too low poly for my taste. One pass already is enough here. And down here you can again see that the bottom surface where the model is supposed to lay flat against the bed is not really flat anymore and we're actually going to clean that up in the slicer itself. All right, let's check out one more and I know a lot of you will love this one. This one is remesh. Now, by default, the remesh modifier will look like a bad version of decimate, but you can actually change how it works. You can either increase the number of passes it does, giving you a higher resolution model, or you can also change how it works internally. You can change it from sharp to smooth, and that should be self-explanatory, but you can also change it over to blocks. And, and this is actually how this modifier works internally. Now, I gotta say, I love how this look turns out. You can change how detailed those blocks are gonna be by changing the octree depth and the scale for fine tuning. And of course you could crank it up so far that you're not even seeing the individual blocks anymore, but that's not the point. The point is to stylize the model. And if you're worried about the underside of the blocks being an unsupported overhang that is basically completely horizontal, well, they're gonna droop a bit, but it's not a major issue. If you have good part cooling, it's just gonna be one or two loops that droop down. You can cut those off with some snippers and you're gonna get a nearly perfect model. So with this last modifier, I'm not really sure what I should think about it. It's kind of creepy, to be honest. 
Now this one, as the name suggests, takes all the fine details and just smoothes them over. And depending on how you set it up, you can either use it for smoothing, which is how it's intended to be used. So use a low smoothing factors and then as many repeats as you want, or you can actually use it as a sharpening filter by setting a negative smoothing. However, this is really sensitive and you can only really do a tiny, tiny amount of sharpening before the model goes berserk, but maybe someday this is gonna be useful. But let's look at the smooth one. Now, you can either just go slightly smooth and you know keep most of the detail in place, or you can go completely over the wall and turn this owl into a Batman, because why not? Again, depending on the model you're working with, it might be a good idea to throw a subdivision surface in front of the smooth filter, but that's up to you to experiment with. Now, one thing I've noticed is that once you go past a certain smoothing factor, it's actually getting less smooth. It's almost like it's getting inverted slightly. And you can use that effect creatively, like in the case of this owl, it adds some texture in places that it didn't have texture before, but I'm not sure whether I like this or not. It's just, it seems a bit random, but again, it might come in useful at some point. Okay, so while all that's printing, let's talk about my New Year's resolution. Being more grateful, focusing on the positive and all the things I and we as a community have achieved. 3D printing has become better, cheaper, easier, more accessible than ever. On this channel, we've already managed to cover so many important topics and for 2018, we're going to cover even more. Heck, I've even hired a full-time employee to help me keep making more quality content for YouTube. And the best thing is, this is all made possible through your support, either by just watching the videos or by contributing directly on Patreon or otherwise. In particular, thank you to my patrons Oliver Nicholas, Neil Youngberg, Woody Boyd, Jeffrey Nicoletti, Fidget, Guni W, Remco Cuts, Keith Austin, Philip Gock, and also to Luke Ingemann, Matthew Bird, 3D Passion, Robert Monaki, Bobby C.C. Wong, Mike Jackson, Sven Miller, Francisco Peebles and Francisco Bischoff, Rudolf Fang, Matthias Peshek, Andy Smith, William Devine, Alexander Strobel, Jordi Böhme, Jerry Sweeney, Michelle Hjolajsson, Alex Adamu, Phyllis Studer, and Hussein Karatas, and a big thank you to everyone else on Patreon. Patreon has actually reversed their fee restructure, so just like before, even a small $1 pledge a month is totally viable. So check out toms3d.org slash Patreon for more. Right, back to the video. So these are some basic ways to process an STL and make it look better. More interesting or simply, well, more unique. Uh, but as always, with customizing things, what I showed you here is only just scratching the surface of what's possible and it's up to you to make the best use of these tools. Combine effects, take the files in and out of Blender and into other software and come up with your own ways to process the designs we already have and make them your own. If you find a look you like, don't forget to share your recipe in the comments below. Or if you're just looking for some cool owls to print, you can find these links down there as well. I, for one, already have an idea of what I'm going to use this process for. Stay tuned for a quick tips video coming up soon. If you like this one, hit that thumbs up button, get subscribed if you loved it. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.